wonderful. We come here to worship you. We clear our minds and we just focus on you, God. We focus on your goodness. We focus on you, Jesus.
together we're gonna walk in faith together because healing is in the room victory is in the room freedom is in the room and this is the breeding ground for miracles right here right here the Bible says where two or three are gathered there I am in the midst there I am in the midst so I want you to lay hands on anything that needs to be healed if it needs to be your heart, your mind, your shoulder, your leg, there's something inside of your body. Just lay your hands on your heart. Just lay your hands on your heart. We're gonna say sickness, sickness can't, stay can't stay any longer. Any longer. Any longer. Any longer. Your perfect love cast out fear I come against fear I come against anxiety I come against depression I come against every evil work by his stripes I am healed in my mind in my heart every organ every cell in my body from the crown to my head to the soles of my feet. I receive my healing. I receive my healing. My God is a healer. My God is healing me. Now, 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 now. In Jesus' name. 
Jesus' name. Come on and give him a shout if you receive that. Come on and thank him in advance for your healing. Come on and thank him and worship him and praise him like it's already done, because it is already done. Say sickness can't stay any longer. Your perfect love is casting out fear. You are your hands Jesus we've come today to honor you to remember what you've done for us on the cross you shed your blood for me that I may be saved and healed. and healed. Today is my day. Is my day. To, receive to receive everything you have for me. Have me. The song that we sung, Lord, the, the song that we sung, Lord, song said, Sickness cannot stay any longer. What was the next verse? Have perfect love casting off fear, and then it says, And it is your will that my life, not just your body, but my life is healed. So, Jesus, we don't need to receive it on the installment plan today, we'll receive it all as we remember you at your table. We want to honor you. You may be seated, those watching online. You may join us as we partake of the Lord's table. Communion time, a special time to receive from the Lord by honoring him in a special way. We do this every first Sunday of the month. We have communion, and we'd like to take a moment to share a bit with you before we do. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, it says, excuse me, it's not what I want. It's Luke chapter 8, verse 48. This is the account of the woman that's in the Bible that was sick, had a blood condition, and she had difficulty getting healed. Spent all of her money, and the Bible says she got worse. Say she got worse. You would think she would get better, but she went to all the doctors and got worse. She probably was cynical, upset, clearly frustrated, lost her peace, maybe given up hope, possibly suicidal. But the Bible says she heard about Jesus. Sometimes all we do to reach out for resources, support, people, organizations, and we come up short. Now it's time to think about who? Jesus. We should have thought about him first, but we should always think about Jesus. And she came in the press, the Bible says. She touched his garment, and he was healed. She was healed. Because she heard other people were healed by touching him. That's my point. Were you touching him today? You know, you can watch a movie. Yeah, I get this. You know, I might say touch. She touched physically, but you can watch a movie and you can be touched. And it's not physical. Will you touch him today?
when you touch someone, you connect with them. And God will have us to be connected to him today so we can touch him. Let him know we're here to receive from you. We appreciate the price you paid for me. We don't take it for granted. The worship, this communion time is about remembering him. We're not, it's not just we do every first Sunday. It's not just the Christian thing to do. No, just, even though it's, it's grape juice, but I see it as symbolically your blood. Even though it's just a, a wafer, no, it's, it's your body. Will you touch him today? Because the temptation for all of us is to be routine about this. And we don't touch. We can become familiar. Yeah. Even with God. Oh, we, we, I got this, God. I got that. Have a seat, God. I got this. No, you don't want to do that today. God wants to do something very special in our lives. And some of us, things have been recurring, you haven't got freedom in. Today is your day. Say, today is my day. Today is my day. Say it again. Today is my day. And if you believe that and expect and touch God, now I'm not going to tell you how to touch him. Nobody told that lady, with this your blood, how to touch. She just touched in her own way. In fact, she, she did it unorthodox. She had a blood condition. She had not been out public, bleeding all over the place. The crowd, and she pressed in through the crowd and touched him. Sometimes you got to get beyond yourself to touch God. It's not that God's playing hard to get or hide and seek. No. He, wants, he responds to faith. Sometimes we can be cool. Well, I prayed about that already. You know, you know what I need, God. No, act like you need it today. Because she went to all kinds of people to have help. And she came to Jesus, she came seriously. She touched it. She physically touched, but she also, because what was happening here, Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? And the disciples said, everybody been touching you? What do you mean, who touched me? You know, come on, Jesus, you get, get it, you know, to kind of get, get crazy with it. He said, no. Somebody touched me today. Other folk were touching physically. No, somebody touched me with faith. And if we're not careful, we can be Christians and not touch God with what? Faith. That's what I'm talking about. Now, only you can do that. I can't do it for you. You can't do it for me. I believe in you. You're my hope. I need you, God. You know, God, I, I, I turn my back on everybody else, God. I'm looking, for, looking to you. Oh, yeah, you got my attention. Looking to me? Only you. Oh, you got my attention? Okay. You touched it now. And so here in verse 48, Luke 8, it says, And he said unto her daughter, say daughter. daughter. He didn't say woman. He didn't say lady. That would have been nice, but he said daughter. Why? Because... She's a daughter of Abraham, so she has a right to healing. It belongs to her. Guess what? We are now children of Abraham through Jesus Christ. The Bible is very clear about that. So we have access. We're also children or sons and daughters of the most high God. That means we have a right to it as well. Then he says, be of good comfort. Your faith have made you whole. We're going to talk about it a little later in the sermon, but how we're made in three parts. It's not just the physical piece that was bothering her. But you have no idea what she was going through, why she, why she was so aggravated in this situation. What's going on in her heart? It doesn't mean that she had evilness in her heart. Just troubled. 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 Lack of peace. Troubled. And she's trying to get it done but troubled her best effort your best effort my best effort still trouble it's not a solution it's time to get his attention on our own through this communion and touch it with your faith your hope in him God I'm not leaving until I get what I need today by the way, after set first service, is very similar what God's doing. Between services, you know, there's a break and 
people go, different students go and so forth. The lady was at the altar. I can imagine what she said. I ain't leaving until I get mine today, God. I'm sure she touched it. I don't know if she was up here. I'm going back to my office, and, and she's up here laying out. I'm not saying you got to do that, but you could. Whatever it takes for you to touch it. She broke through the crowd to touch it. Sometimes it's the risk of embarrassment or you're thinking about what people think. But in your mind, like in her case, I've been living 12 years with this stuff and nobody want to be around me. I'm stinking all the time. They, they, they say they talk about me. But Jesus is healing people by just touching it. I'm going to touch him too. Not just trying to touch him like the other people are touching him. I'm going to believe I'm going to give my healing today. Because she heard other people got their healing when they touched it in faith. Not just a casual touch. No, it's nice sweater. No, no. Something you need from God. You know, it's like the, oh yeah, like I got talk. It's like the Peter and John were on the way to the temple in the book of Acts. They saw this man begging. All for the poor. All for the poor. He said, look at us. And he said, the man expected to receive something. See, come into God, in the house of God, expect to receive. Don't come out of tradition. Don't come out of obligation. Don't come out of routine. Come expect to receive. This woman expected to receive. A lot of folk were touching and probably needed healing, walked away with no healing because they weren't expecting to receive. They were seeing if it might have worked for them. I heard about them to try, try that out. I'm not trying to judge. Just examine your own place where you are. Are you willing to do what it takes? He said, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Last Sunday, God birthed something in this church. And the sermon I was preparing to teach on the day for the month, I'd be teaching themes. And, and last evening, I was preparing my last time reviewing it. And God says, no, don't, don't, don't teach on that. I started something. I'm going to finish it. Talk about peace. Because the wholeness, peace, spirit, soul, mind, our emotions, and our body are all connected. And if we look at just the, the bleeding piece, or just the bump, and the rash, and the pain here, the back here, or the artery, or whatever issue, we miss it. We don't get all that we need. A lot of it is because we're not at peace. Spirit of God, come to bring you peace. The Spirit of God comes to bring you peace. The Spirit of God comes to bring you peace. God comes to bring you peace. It might help to close your eyes to focus on God. Spirit of God comes to bring you peace. He comes to bring you peace. You're watching online. He's coming to bring you peace. The Spirit of God comes to bring you to bring you peace. During communion time, I'd like to, before we partake, I'd like to ask Janet and her daughter, Jamila, to come um, and share. They came to service last Sunday. Come a little closer over here, please. Yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You stand next to me.
me. There you go. And you're going to share their healing that occurred sometime before. It wasn't last Sunday, but it's in context what we're talking about because communion time is a time for healing, y'all. A special time for healing. Maybe physically you're okay, but what about the rest of you? The emotions, your thoughts, your heart. Share with us, please. First, giving honor to God. God is head of my life, not the tail. I'm here today because I'm not playing church anymore. I'm here today when I got the call to come testify. I went into fasting. Mm. I went into study. Amen. Because I wasn't just going to give you anything. How would you like it if I was going to fix you a meal and I just throw something together? I want to give you something that I had put my heart and soul in. Amen. Because there may be somebody today who may be a visitor, just like my daughter only came here one time and came up and got prayer, and then a year later, the second time she came back was last Sunday to share with us her healing. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you may be like me. I come regularly. Amen. It has nothing to do with how many times you come, and it has nothing to do with what you put in the offering plate. This is not an auction. We're going uh, to share a testimony. Question. Yes, okay. I got good excited. Okay. okay, my testimony is that as a baby, I was born with a hole in my heart. I was born with pulmonary stenosis, which means that my pulmonary artery was, uh, wasn't was normal, it was narrow. That's the most important artery that carries, doesn't carry oxygen, but it goes to the lungs to pick up oxygen to go throughout the whole body. And then on top of that, I had asthma. And then as I became a little girl, I had, the asthma got worse. I had a, a terrible asthma attack at age 16. I almost died. My aunt almost overdosed me, and it was nothing the doctor could do for me. And from there, I started fainting at school. I was having hyperventilation. Okay, moving along. Now I'm in my 20s, and now I'm in a domestic violence relationship. I'm manic depressed, but the depression started at 10 years old when I had a a mentally abusive father. And then I became suicidal, and I would hide it. And I'm not ashamed to say it. And I, there was a time, I, it, it almost stopped me from not testifying, but I believe when you tell the truth, you not only set myself free, but others free. Yeah. Because suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in America, so I have to talk about it. So moving along, I'm getting older now. Um, I'm in my 30s, 40s, and I have hypertension really bad. And as a result of that, I had a heart attack, two heart attacks in 2010. I had a stroke, a full-blown stroke, uh, a couple of years after that. And then I was having TIAs, which are called baby strokes. And because of many years of hypertension, depression, et cetera, I now had congested heart failure in 2015. For those who know, don't know what it's about, uh, when you have congested heart failure, it's like drowning in your own water inside your body. You don't have to be in a swimming pool or ocean to drown. And uh, my feet would swell up. O overnight, I would gain five to 10 pounds of water. And I had to go from taking 40 milligrams of medicine to 80 to 120. But when I got to the point that I said, I'd rather live in a shoebox with Jesus than with the devil in a mansion. When I decided that I was going to love myself and God loves me. And that fear was not going to control me. Because God doesn't give me fear. He gives me love, power, and a sound mind. When Bishop called for... Uh, to come up for prayer. And I will admit there was time, I don't, I'm not gonna go up. But don't let fear, I'm talking to somebody today, I don't know who it is, but part of the reason why you haven't gotten your total healing is because of fear 
and because you won't come up. Now, you know, healing can take place outside of the church, but I'm talking about right now. We're on fertile ground. There's anointing and peace and healing in this room. So don't hesitate to come up and receive your healing. When I went into the hospital this year, it wasn't because of my heart. It was because of something very minor, but they had to run tests. And I'll never forget the doctor said, Ms. Harrell, you got heart disease. And then she said, oh, wait a minute. This is your O report. You don't have heart disease anymore. Come on. Come so what on. I'm wow. saying, believe the report of the Lord, not the report of the doctor. And what happened? Okay. okay. Tell, them. Hold on. Tell, tell them how you came forward and what happened. Okay. okay. So when I came and, and, and also, too. No, no, just tell them you came forward and got a minute. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm just excited. I'm full. I'm sorry. I'm full. When I came forward, uh, Bishop laid hands on me, and there was a connection. And I call it a, th a three-way conference call between Bishop, me, and the Holy Spirit. It's supernatural. I felt something. I felt like I wanted to run to the back of the church. And some of you have seen me come here with a walker, a cane. There was a time, that day that I came up, I was holding on to the chairs, hoping I wouldn't fall. And so I got, you know, I'm healed. Come on. And you can be healed too, whatever Come you're on. going through. Don't Come let on. fear hold you back. Amen. And I serve eviction papers to the devil. He got right. to go. All right. Okay. Yes, thank you. Good morning, everybody. God is God is good. I just want to let everybody know that God is not dead. Come on. Even though the world wants to uh, convince you and deceive you. Come on. Um, Jesus is alive and well because he healed me. For 20 years, I was suffering from horrible back pain from a car accident. I lost feeling in my left leg. I had epidurals. I had surgery. And three months after my surgery in 2014, um, my vertebrae collapsed. So... I was suffering previously from the surgery for 20 years, but after that second car accident, the pain was tripled. And I uh, was able to bear it because of God. It was just me and God and my Bible. I stopped uh, moving my Bible from shelf to shelf. I removed the dust and I opened up the word of God. And I know he chastens the ones he loves. I get it now. And I'm no longer a sin, a bondage to sin because of Jesus and I'm not making plans to sin anymore and making plans to repent because Jesus is with me and um, I came here with my mom she um, asked me to come and I came up for prayer that day and that was a year ago mm. and a year later I got my healing my come best on. friend was with me and she said she knew God was calling her to heal me at that moment she obeyed God came over to me prayed over me the next morning, I was standing up straight. I used to be leaning this way, leaning this way, crawling to the bathroom. I didn't sleep for three years. For three years, I didn't sleep. My eyes were turning black. And I never cursed God, because I knew he was going to heal me. I kept the faith. Even though everybody yes. around me wanted me to rebuke God, I mean, to blame God, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Mm. But... God definitely changed me. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. I've been born again, been born again. It's so true. I don't see with the same eyes I had before. Thank you. Thank you. Give her a hand. You. Thank you. Give both a hand. Thank you. I had them share because sometimes we don't hear these reports. She came forward, got healed. It's not about glorifying me. It's an environment. Her daughter, she came, got prayed for, ministered to, received her healing, but it manifested a year later. The point is this. You got to believe. You got to keep believing. She didn't tell you, but her husband said, curse God. I ain't doing it. You may get a thought, curse God, forget about this stuff. Just like that woman with Jesus. It's been a long time, 12 years is a long time to suffer. Yeah. And thoughts come, forget about it, walk away, don't look to God, he, he don't care about you. And when we get those thoughts, we close the door on God. But I'm here to announce to you. The Spirit of God comes to bring you 
before he was to be betrayed and crucified. He broke bread, the Bible says. He said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Is that just for tradition? No. He don't want you to ever forget. song you sing about love song I broke my heart people walking away walking around with broken hearts and Jesus want to heal your broken heart today if you receive it just receive and eat and receive your healing said take the cup my blood which was shed for you as often as you drink it do it in remembrance of me notice what she said Jamila I would plan to sin and then plan to ask God to forgive me I said the first service that was a new one for me guess what I'm going to mess up. But I'm going to ask you to forgive me. That's like praying Russian roulette. But that's what she was. But God forgives you. He forgives you. The thoughts. He forgives you. The words, the actions, He forgives you. Now will you forgive you? Spirit of God comes to bring you peace. Will you forgive you? The Spirit of God comes to bring you peace. Let's drink. Just touch somebody nearby. please yeah yeah the spirit of God is here now let's allow him opportunity as we allow the psalmist to play on the guitar the piano drums singers yeah 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 this is this is our time our private time with God you can close your eyes it's okay To worship, touch it.
Yes, Lord God. I'm not ashamed of you. Oh Lord God, I love you, Lord God. The Spirit of God wants to bring you peace. Lord, I need you, Lord God. Oh Lord God. The Spirit of God wants to bring you peace. Lord, I cry out to you, Lord God. Heal your people. Heal me, Lord God. The Spirit of God wants to bring you Yes, Lord God. Oh, the God wants to bring you peace. Yeah, 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 love him. Come on. Worship him, worship him, worship him. The God wants to bring you peace. Worship him, worship him, worship him. The God wants to bring you Worship him. Worship him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Receive your healing. Spirit, soul, and body.
you want, you can tell me after service or tell somebody or write a letter on the online. You can email us at dearpastor.ccf.org or go to the contact on the website. Let us know what God did and what God is doing. I take my time to do this, not to just to extend the service and not to be emotional, but to allow us to get into a place where we can find God in a more intimate way, a more expressive way among family and friends. It's difficult for you to do this when you're at work or in, at the library, on the train, in class, on the campus. I mean, you could, but you know, you kind of stand out. But if any place we can be more intimate and let it all hang out, if you would, with God, it needs to be here. It's kind of like with your spouse. There's things I want to be able to do with my wife I can't do publicly. You know, yeah. There's ways I want to act and I want to touch her. I want to be with her. I can't do that in public. I get it. But this is the place. One of the places. Your private time at home is another one. And we want to give God an opportunity to do more. I'm not sure about you. I'm not interested. I get a job any place, y'all. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need, I, I want what God wants. I'm not in this for the money. I'm not in it for no whatever popularity. I'm not in it for that, for no title. I want God to meet people's needs. Yeah. And it, sometimes it takes time to do that. It takes time. And it's not that we've got to get God ready. He has to help us get ready. <laughs> you know, we do weddings. and <laughs> I thought we were supposed to start at 2 o'clock. Well, the bride's not ready yet. Well, we just got to wait, man. She ain't ready. <sighs> so God's really waiting on us. Amen. He came ready. He's waiting on you. And so that's what this is about. It's not just only the physical healing, but the spiritual healing. emotional and it's the healing is not existing because of lack of peace doing this morning? Wonderful. Uh, well, we are the Renfro family. My name is Pearl. This is my husband, Jason. We planned on having our very energetic toddler up here, but she had other plans. I don't know where she's at. <laughs> but we just wanted to take the time to uh, welcome all of you this morning. And uh, we'd also like to welcome and acknowledge any of our first-time visitors. If you, have, uh, if you are visiting with us for the first time today, could you please raise your hand? Welcome. Welcome. Our ushers are issuing you a first-time visitor's card. We ask that you please fill it out and place it in our offering buckets when they come by. On behalf of Bishop and First Lady, I just want to welcome you all, especially our first-time visitors. At the end of service, you'll go over to right there to those double doors. You'll be escorted in the back with Bishop. You guys can hang out for a little bit, ask some questions about our ministry. You'll get some retreats and uh, some retreats. 
some treats. Yeah, a retreat would be nice. But you'll get some treats. <laughs> and, um, and you just hang out with him just for like three or four minutes. So um, now normally I, I wouldn't say this, but God prompted me to. Um, normally we do hug somebody. Um, and our band kind of plays it up. So we can just do a soft song and everyone just kind of do it quickly so we can get back into this atmosphere of peace. That would be great. Okay, so everyone hug somebody, make it quick. <laughs> Going to receive our offering and have the usher just go ahead and pass the offering containers as we pray. A simple prayer and get right into what God wants to say. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give to you. Thank you for those who are giving online, text to give, giving an early service. I declare them blessed to receive everything you have in store for them, for giving to you. They give willingly, they give cheerfully, they give on purpose. And we give ourselves to you. Not just our substance, not just our money, but our lives. You've done so much for us, God. And we're grateful. We give to you in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. If you would, open your Bible to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. As the ushers begin to so be sensitive to our time, but also give God an opportunity to just do what he needs to do and minister to us and give us a better understanding. Last Sunday, God birthed something special in our church. And this song we're singing, the spirit of God comes to bring you peace. It's a song that God gave me, but the psalmist picked up on the melody and we just, but the songs being birthed, but they're worship songs and but this peace, this peace is huge. 
And I have prepared already a message uh, and a topic to teach on this month. We have month to monthly topics. But God changed it last night. And he kept bringing me back to, bringing me back to peace. And so I want to talk about that. I began to study further last night. And, and I began to see, there's a lot here, God. You want to tell us about peace. And I began to connect the dots about wholeness. That's why I mentioned the lady in communion. He said, be whole. Go in peace. And too often we're focusing on what we, what we can see, what we can feel, emotions, um, our body, our heart. But God wants to go deep and get it all done. Say all done. all done. He doesn't need to heal on the installment plan. If we just focus on, Doc, God, fix this bump, this, this pain, you know, whatever the situation is, then we're directing God as opposed to, that's why worship is so important. He'll get it all done in worship. Amen. You know, sometimes you go to the doctor and they'll ask for you to write a history. God knows your history already. He knows it better than you. And he knows what's really the source of what's troubling some of us. That's impacting our peace. But it says here in verse 23 in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now may the God of peace, say God of peace. God of peace. That's huge. I mean, I know it, but then I guess I didn't know it as deeply as I'm knowing it now. And I'm going to know, know it more later. And that is, he's the God of peace. And it's mentioned multiple times in scripture that he's the God of peace. Wow. Why? It's needed. It's needed. It's the lack of peace that's causing much of our problems in the world. Amen. Our relationships. Why folk break up, get divorced, stop being friends. I mean, your, your blood, your relatives, but you know, I ain't coming by your house. I ain't talking to you. It's like a what? Peace. And so we need to protect our peace. Amen. And it's not by cutting folk out of your life. You're still mad at them, okay? They mention their name, you're troubled. If they get blessed, now you're upset they get blessed. You know what, God? How can they get blessed? Because you haven't dealt with it properly and deeply. Now, I'm not here to put stuff on you, make you feel bad. I got to deal with that same as a pastor, as a person, as a husband, as a father. Make sure I keep my peace. And I got to work at it. Say, I got to work at it. We all have to. It's because you love the Lord, you have a good heart, it's not enough. You have to keep your peace. Now, the God of peace himself, sanctified, that's kind of an interesting word, but it means to set apart for holy service. You completely, say completely. Completely. That means all of you. And may your whole spirit, soul, and what? Wow. Body be preserved. It means you're going to live a long time. Blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God wants to heal everything about you. Your spirit, your soul. That's your mind, your emotion, your intellect, and your body. Notice the body's last. It's the last place where it shows up. <laughs> in fact, guys, years ago when we started our church, you know, and we do help people in all kinds of ways in our church. But this one sister, we, she was around 35, 40 years old at that time, around that, maybe 38. And she didn't have any money, but she was sick a lot. So I sent her to the doctor. We paid for her, get checked out because we want to get some help. We prayed for her, but she just. And so um, I ended up talking to her and talking to the doctor later, you know, and he said, part of her problem, she has arthritis, Pastor. She's only 38 years old. What do you know about arthritis? He said, Pastor, that's an emotional challenge, emotional problem. That's the source of it. She's disturbed on the inside. Wow. It's just showing up uh, called arthritis. 
And the other diseases, diseases, diseases like that. It's not physical. It's the manifestation of what's happening in the inside. The lack of what? Peace. Lack of peace. I'm reminded of Jesus is at Martha's house and Mary's house. There's sisters there, sisters of Lazarus. And they became acquainted with Jesus after he rose them from the, in the dead, from the dead, and just became friends. And so he went over to the house to have dinner with the fellows, the disciples. And Martha was excited about that. You know, she got the food together and, and looked up. She's sweating a little bit in the kitchen too long by herself. Looked up, where's my sister at? <laughs> you know, I need some help. And so what happened was she looked up and her sister was out in the other room sitting at Jesus' feet hearing the word. Hey. Not helping me in another part of ministry. In this case, the kitchen. And I'm sure she was doing a good thing. Went to prepare and serve him right and feed him and the guys and get the meal together being a good hostess. But she came and Jesus kind of interrupted his ministry to everybody that was there plus his, her sister Mary was at his feet. And she said, Jesus, this is my paraphrase, Jesus, tell my sister to come help me in this kitchen. It's hot up there, you know what? I need some help around here. And then he said this, Martha, 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 Martha. He didn't say, oh, uh, I'll send one of my disciples come help you. He didn't say that. Which probably could have helped in the physical realm, but it's deeper than that. He said, Martha, Martha, you are troubled about many things. See, stuff piles up, but you don't deal with the peace issue. Right. You think it's this? No, it's, it goes back further than that. Take a history. For a lot of people, it's father issues at the root of it. Sometimes it's mother issues. Sometimes it's ex-husband, ex-wife issues. Or present husband, present wife issues. <laughs> Amen. Could be all kind of stuff. Boss, lack of money, just what's happening in the world, politics, issues, trouble. Jesus came to give us peace. Bible we just read, read earlier, he's a God of peace. We didn't have peace at all costs, get it? Because it'll destroy your life. And it would limit the, our loved ones who watch us to follow us as Christians to want to follow us and believe in Jesus. They see us not walking in peace. We look good. We can, can kind of, we do a good job putting stuff on and all that and kind of, you know. And then we, in private, we're not at peace. Because what's in the heart always comes out of the mouth. You're going to tell somebody. Yeah, you're going to always tell. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. He said, Martha, Martha, you are troubled about many things. Say many things. Many things. He said, leave your sister alone. She has chosen the best, the good part. Life is all about choices. The Bible says, in, I've said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life that both you and your seed, your generations to come, shall live. It's based on peace. You got to make choices for peace. Say choice for peace. peace. That means forgiveness is key. Getting peace. But if I forgive them, they'll act like it's okay to treat me like you did. No, it's not okay, but you've forgiven them now. You know, you don't let them keep doing it like that again, but you know, it's, it's, you just need to forgive people. Why? It ain't, it's not, yeah, you need to forgive them, but it's for you. It's for you. It's for you. Say, it's for me. It's for me. I know some of you are hurting. I know, I, I, just, I just know. And we all got stuff we kind of, sometimes we got to tiptoe about. 
You know, how you do. so-and-so, he's, they're special. You got to go, we can't stay and talk to him any kind of way. You got to be careful with him or her. I get that. But the Spirit of God has come today to give you peace. Amen. Just a few more minutes. Look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And this is after, and this was a time, I won't go into all the details, but it talks about whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, goes on a whole list of things, honest. Then he says, think on these things. And none of the things he lists that you should think on is negative. Amen. None of them. But you know, we, sometimes we got to deal with stuff that's negative and you got to fix stuff. I get that piece, but you don't dwell on and, and meditate on it though. Right. You don't take it home with you. You know, we have to learn, and this is the challenge where I'm going to help you on a practical level. We have to learn to just give up stuff. Even though I hear it all the time as a pastor, well, it's not always easy. It takes time. Why does it take so, so, much, so, so long with you then? You won't let it go. You know how it is. We got maybe an old car, backyard, or driveway, not running. But somebody came up, I would like to get that. Take it off your hands. Maybe it could be a few dollars or whatever. He said, you can have it. I don't want that. You can just take it. You just give it away, right? Or that jacket, or that dress. Somebody wants it, you don't wear it, you haven't worn it in 20 years, you can have that, That'll, you can, right? See how easy that was? Let it go. Amen. You will let it go easier when you realize it is packing your peace. Amen. You'll let it go faster and easier when you realize it's impacting your peace. And that, therefore, peace in everything, even the dis-ease, is lack of peace. Amen. Amen. Say, let it go. Let it go. Help our children. We're going to talk about it later in this teaching this, this month. I know it's holiday season, but we've got to help this peace, peace. We're going to be singing the peace songs and all that. And folk, folk, that's why folk commit suicide during this time. Why? I don't have no peace. We've got to help them. Tap into it. Amen. Or is it just nice songs? Nice stuff on the Christmas card. Uh, it could be better than that. Some practical insight how to have this peace. And the key is knowing God better. Amen. Knowing who he is and who he is to you. That's bottom line. Scriptures tell us that the God of peace the grace and peace be multiplied. Say be multiplied. Grace and peace be multiplied to the knowledge of God and of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Understand God, knowing God. When you know God is your source, when you know God has your back, what you're afraid of, what you have no peace about when you really know that. See, it slips in when you're really not sure he's going to come through about that situation. So we try to fix it. And it doesn't always work well. So we'll get into more detail later. But see, unless we help ourselves, my hand goes up too. I deal with all kinds of people, all kinds of circumstances. And I get low anxious at times, and I realize, Ed, relax, get, get a grip, Ed, Pat Bishop. <laughs> Pat First Lady said, that's right, amen. <laughs> unless we, we, then we won't last long, y'all. You know, I like sweets. You know, I like sweet things, right? Hey, man, I like them. <laughs> yeah, 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 I like sweet things. Um, and one of them is chocolate cake. You know, hey, amen, got amen in it. <laughs> but too much of it, you know, can kind of... So I've been having good physicals over the years and had one about a couple years ago and 
no, about a year ago. And the doctor said, your cholesterol has gone up a little high. I said, I've been doing good. Look, I got the charts looking up. Yeah, but they went up. You know, it's, now it's not high, but it's higher than what it was before. It's still in an acceptable range, but it's getting too close to where it, you know. And you get no order. I said, well, I said, what you doing? I'm eating. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> you know, I've been having some double king cheese, egg bur burgers. Put, put an egg on top of that burger. Come back on that. All the cholesterol and the, and the burgers, and now I eat burgers all the time, but every now and then. He said, now cut back on the now and then. He wanted to give me some medicine. And I said, Doc, I don't want to go there. He said, then you change your habit, change your diet. So I, I began to do that. I had test just about a week, a couple weeks ago. Came back much better. My point is that, you know, this is the point. Sometimes we, we, we know we shouldn't eat that second piece or go, eat, go buy that store and get one of those again. Uh, but, but, but especially when it's like late at night by yourself. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Don't want to wake nobody up. <laughs> Gotta warm that up a little bit. <laughs> Put a little ice cream on top. <laughs> Stop. But the point is this. What do they call it? They call it comfort food. Please, I'm talking about peace. If we're not careful, we're looking for stuff like food and that, 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 that comforts us and don't go to the God of all comfort. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying you can have some you know, special stuff when you, every now and then, but my point is that be careful that we're not doing things, whether it's food or other things, that's, right. that's trying to address the comfort need in our life, the, the, the need for more peace in our life. And it doesn't do the job. In fact, it does damage. We're trying to find peace in all the wrong places. And it backfires on us. This is why peace is so important. You know, we can do it in moderation, but it's the excess that becomes a problem. It's the excess that becomes a problem. And, and we got to check ourselves in these areas and think about what am I holding on to? What's still bothering me in the midnight hour? What do I think about? What, because I was something I didn't have when I was younger? I left out, I, mean, I missed out, I don't know. But just leave it at the altar and say, God, I'm not going to care about that no more. Amen. I don't have a father in my life, I'm not going to care about that. I'm not hating on him. I, he wasn't there, okay, but you my father. Yeah. The Bible says he's a father to the fatherless. Yeah. I'm going to let you be there so I can have some what? Peace. Amen. I'm not saying, it's, you know, but I'm not hating on you, whatever. But my point is that you want to live a life, you got to have peace. And you can't live in the past to do that. You can't live in the past to do that. And, and you can't just cover it up with stuff, with comfort food and comfort things. You know, sometimes people are those things. I, I'm going to be another man, another woman. Why some guys are married, they're looking for comfort. Yeah. I'm preaching now. Yeah. No, I'm serious. It's, You just examine yourself. Communion is about examining yourself, not me examining you. Some of our behaviors, why do we do some of the stuff we do? Why do we run and avoid certain kind of situations? This is about self-examination. That's what communion is about. Examine yourself. And so today, The peace that we need from God is huge. And I want to take a moment, just, just a moment, just for a moment. We want to allow God 
go a little deeper with the further insight we just receive about peace and the importance of peace. The Spirit of God comes to bring you peace. The Spirit of God comes to bring you peace. Now say brings me peace. The Spirit of God comes to bring me peace. You can sing that with us online. Yeah, you can do that. Spirit of God comes to bring me peace. You may lift up your hands if you can. Yes. The Spirit of God comes to bring me peace. I think you make it, you smile more when you have peace. Yeah, yeah. The Spirit of God comes to bring me peace. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. The Spirit of God comes to bring me peace. Just let it go. The Spirit of God comes to bring me peace. Just let it go, my friend. Tell them they can have the money. They don't owe you no more. The Spirit of God. God's your source. Comes to bring me peace. Tell them you love them and you forgive them. Why? You need peace. The Spirit of God comes to bring me peace. You don't abort them no more. Why? You got what? Peace. The Spirit of God comes to bring me peace. I have it now, God. I have it now. I ain't letting it go. <laughs> the Spirit of God comes to bring me peace. I have it. I'm not letting it go, Lord God. Yes. The Spirit of God comes to bring me peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Spirit of God comes to bring me peace. Sense it already in your heart? Yeah, in your mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Spirit of God comes to bring me Now, as you could sing softly, and listen, please. Now, now is the next step, decision time. It's always about action. It's all about choices, and there's a choice you need to make. And some of you, it's about committing your life to Christ, to God, to His Son, Jesus Christ. It's not a ploy what I've done. It's just what I do every Sunday. What I do every Bible study, it's, it's an opportunity to come to God. And there are people here that I believe need to come to God today. And I'm saying, just come. I want to pray for you. Just come. Because the peace is only sustainable. You, you get a sense of it right now. But if you're outside of Christ, you walk out without it. But if you're in Christ, you can come to God again and again because he's your father. He's the God of peace. Let him become your father, your heavenly father. Come, my brother, my sister, come. Come. Yeah, yeah. Come. See, I won't ask you to say anything. Just come. I want to pray for you. Just come. Give your life to Jesus. Bring all your things with you. Come, 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 come. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Yes, yes, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, I believe there are others. Yes, yes. Spirit of God wants to bring you peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Spirit of God wants to bring you peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I believe there are others to come to give your life to Jesus, but also to recommit your life to him. I'm not sure if Jamila said in more detail, but she began to read her Bible before she got her healing manifested. She began, this is after God, she got prayed for, but she began to read her Bible and began to understand scriptures. And in about a year's time, because the word did it, 
And that's the, what the Bible says. It's the knowledge of God. God, you're good. You're not the one that's hating on me. You're not the one bringing this on me. God, I'm looking to you. Otherwise, she could have rejected God and cursed God in her difficult time. But the Bible says, look to him. Look to him. Some of you, you need to recommit your heart and your life to him. So come. Come on. I want to pray for you too. Recommit your life to Christ. You're already a believer. Maybe you got saved you're as a young child, but it's time to say, Lord, I'm all in. I can't do this without you. Yeah, yeah. Somebody. <sighs> Suicide. The thoughts been going through your mind. You can't deal with it by yourself. Come, come. There are others for other reasons, but you in particular, you need to come. Come. And then not just coming, but coming to commit, Lord, I want to learn about what you have for me. Learn about you, that I, how good you are to me. It's the knowledge of God that does it. It's the knowledge of God, my friend. It's not just the altar call. It's the knowledge of God that does it. And your knowledge of God talks, tells you about who you are in him, how he sees you. And when we get that, we can truly have peace. If you think you're an old wretch, think God will never forgive you, think you're not good enough, because other people may treat you that way, but God don't treat you that way. You're not a reject to God. He created you. And he don't make no ugly. It's time for you to accept who you are in Christ and walk in the peace and the life that he has for you. So I want you to come. 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 Give your life to Jesus or recommit your life. Come. Or be filled with this Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. We need him to help us. Yes. You don't want to leave here today without the Holy Spirit. Empowered by the Holy Spirit. Some of you know you're not yet empowered by the Holy Spirit. Come. We'll minister to you. And lastly, to join our church community. Be part of our church family. You can do that today. Just come. The Spirit of God is here. To give you peace. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, the spirit of suicide is, is the trick from the enemy. He's disturbing your peace, and he, he wants to use you to, to disturb other people's peace. And God wants to use you, and he's trying to take you out of here. So mm. that came to me, so I just thought I'd share it. It's, it's the trick of the enemy. Mm. I mean, you, people think that they're getting away with stuff, but you're disturbing other people's peace. And the enemy is keeping you from uh, walking in the purpose that you have to set other people free. So, amen. Thank you. Amen. These kind of thoughts and thoughts like that are, are not unique to you. In fact, mortality rate was published last week in America. It's gone down. People are living not as long as they used to. And the number two reasons is drug, drug overdose and drug, drug abuse and suicide. It's common, but it's too common. And we don't need to talk about this. Get caught up in the rat race. At the end of the day, you're still a rat. You haven't gotten better because you're in the rat race. Stay in race, walk with God. And this is more the challenge for many Christians, especially our nice Christians. We don't want to give it all to God. You think it'll cost you too much. It costs you too much already. It's costing you too much already. That's why we're doing this. The Spirit of God has come to bring you peace. Just say yes, Lord. I'm all in, Lord God. The Spirit of God comes to bring you peace. I know you need to respond. Just come on. Come on. The Spirit of God comes to bring you Run to the Lord now, my friend. Before I pray, I don't want you to miss out. Spirit of God comes to bring you. You don't want to miss out, my friend. You need this. You need this. 
Spirit of God comes to bring you peace. You need this. Spirit of God comes to bring you peace. Stretch your hands toward my brothers and sisters, please. Lord, let the anointing, not just of healing, fall upon them, but the anointing of purpose and clarity and peace that they'll have a, such a hunger to learn and walk in your peace. So we, we have to learn how to do this, God. We've learned how to walk in fear and how to, how to have all these boundaries and limitations and, and all this stuff in our lives and not freedom and not peace. So when I lay my hands upon them, Lord God, let something drop, your spirit drop in their heart in such a way. They'll be have a stronger hunger for you. And they'll find a greater level of peace. Help others, because when they find theirs, they can help others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Spirit of God comes to bring you peace. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Spirit of God, yes, Lord God, comes to bring you. Yes, Lord God, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord God. Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus, give him peace, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spirit of God, comes to bring you peace. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Spirit of God comes to bring you peace. Spirit of God comes to bring you peace. Father, I pray for your people. They receive everything you have in store for them. You know why they came. You know the real reason why they came. What they really need from you. And I thank you for giving it to them that they'll receive all that you have in store for them. But you love them, Lord God. You brought them here. That's why we took the time to allow you to touch their hearts, Lord God. So thank you. And thank you. Open up their eyes to their understanding. They may fully understand the hope of their calling. And live a wonderful life, of abundant life, a peace. With themselves, peace. With you, God, peace with others. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you turn to your right, my left? So my sister there in the gold blouse and the black jacket. Go with her, go with her, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, Zoe. Yes. Dear God. If you're a first time visiting our service today, we thank God for you to come out and be with us today. We appreciate our visitors. We have a brief first time visitor reception just for you. And my wife and I would like to say hi to you as well, give you a free gift. And if you have a question or two, we can answer that question. It takes about three minutes if you're on your way. And so if you would, please stand to your feet and come forward as a visitor. If you brought a visitor, you may come with them. Let's thank God for our visitors. Amen. You may come forward, please. Our first time visitor. Thank you for coming. Yes. Spirit of God. Come to bring you peace. Yeah, come on, Zoe. We love our visitors. Spirit of God, come to bring you. Yes, Lord God. Come on, they're still coming. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. The Spirit of God. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. Yes, come on, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. Come to give you peace. Yes, come on, come on, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The Spirit of God wants to bring you peace. Yes, 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 yes. The Spirit of God wants to bring you peace. God is doing something special and different. And I trust you can appreciate it. I don't fully understand all of it. I know that I want to keep walking with God. 
And if you get here and the first service is still going on, don't get mad. Just find a parking space and say, God's moving. Let me get in there. <laughs> but don't get mad at us. People getting free, y'all. Amen. They're getting free. We don't send the service just because we want to. Plus, we get out a pretty good time anyway. But I just want to encourage you. One of our ladies was Sunday. Last Sunday, she was here, and she, uh, she said, I kept singing this song, even the work, Pastor. This song we're singing now. Spirit of God, come to bring you peace. So bring it with you. Yes. Watch the video. Have a wonderful day. Hello, Zoe family. Here are some announcements. Beginning Monday, January 7th, as a congregation, we will start a Daniel Fast. The Daniel Fast is a 21-day, biblically-based method of fasting that will position our spirits to be more sensitive to hear and respond to the voice of the Holy Spirit. During the Daniel Fast, you will ask God what part He wants you to play in reaching your family, friends, neighbors, and Zoe Church community. For more information, you may pick up a handout at the Welcome Center or visit zcf.org. Join us for our Christmas presentation, Watch the Signs, on Sunday, December 23rd, as we illustrate the story and signs of the birth of Christ through drama, singing, and dance. Invite friends, family, and neighbors in your community as we celebrate our Lord and Savior. Oh, what God can do with only His people are praying. On Friday, December 14th, come pursue the Lord with us during late night prayer, a special time where we come together for prayer, worship, healing, and testimonies. You may join us anytime between 7.30 p.m. and midnight. And those were your announcements. Be very blessed. Hello, Zoe. Is it on? Can you hear me okay? All right, must be on. I got a little voice today. How's everybody doing? How was your Thanksgiving? Must have been awesome because nobody showed up in my house. All went fine. Amen. Well, did you enjoy that message today? Wasn't it good? Peace. Keep your joy. Amen. Have a blessed week.